Hello, I'm Dr Natalie Mears. I'm a reader and associate professor in the history department at Durham University and I'm here to introduce the new Great Britain's project. Late in 2001, the BBC launched its Great Britain's project to find the top 100 and then the top 10 greatest Britons of all time. The criteria were quite straightforward. You had to have been born or resided in the British Isles, including Ireland, and played a significant role in the life of the islands. The purpose of the project, if I can quote the BBC, was to stimulate national debate over what we value today in our history and culture and who we want to personify as representative of those values. Over the next few months, the BBC um, solicited public nominations um, through BBC One, BBC Two and the website. And in August um, 2002, they announced the top 100 nominations. Our long films were made of the top 10 nominees and these were broadcast. They were followed by a televised debate. Then in October and November, there was a public vote by telephone and the results were announced in mid-November. The winner was Winston Churchill. There was also an accompanying exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery and a book. So I became interested um, in the BBC's project when I began research on my new book on Elizabeth I. She came seventh in the public poll, one of only two women in the top ten. The other was Diana, Princess of Wales, who came third. My own research is about exploring the posthumous narratives of Elizabeth outside the kind of dominant circle of elite, educated, white, largely Protestant men who really kind of dominated the sort of historiography of Elizabeth. It's really influenced by the decolonisation, Me Too and Black Lives Matter movements, which have really questioned the sort of dominant narratives. In the context of the decolonisation, the curriculum movement, as well as that of Me Too and Black Lives Matter, it really seems a good time to reevaluate the BBC's project, especially as it's 20 years since it ran. So what was the original list like and what aspects might we want to rethink? Well, first, the most striking aspect of the list is how male it is. A hundred nominations. 87 of them are men. Moreover, the people that the BBC kind of opined not making the top 100 were, with one exception, also all men, whether it was artists like Constable and Turner, poets like Byron, Shelley, or those from the entertainment industry like um, Alfred Hitchcock, Laurence Olivier, Peter Sellers, Spike Milligan. The second issue was race and the BBC's blindness to this. It was remarked that there were no people of colour in the top 100. And this wasn't true. And the fact that they didn't realise that it wasn't true, I think is quite telling. There was one person of colour and that was Freddie Mercury, who was born in Zanzibar and is of um, Zoroastrian Parsi um, uh, heritage. The absence of black Britons in particular from the, li the list prompted the historian and archivist Patrick Vernon in 2004 to set up his own project and solicit nominations to, to kind of create a, a list of sort of top, top 100 black Britons. Third is sexuality. Four of the, the top 100 nominees could be identified as being part of the LGBTQ plus community, though not all of them were out in their lifetimes. And this aspect of identity was just not mentioned at all by the BBC. Particularly in today's context, as I said, of Me Too, Black Lives Matter, etc. Those are the most kind of glaring issues or potential differences from the 2002 list to what the people we might want to nominate today. But there were other issues. It was a very Anglo-centric list and particularly um, dominated by London and the South East. There was also no mention or discussion of class. The first is prompted by a statement made by Mark Harrison, the series producer of the original project. He argued that the top 100 was dominated by white Englishmen because there hadn't been enough history for women to make their mark. If only we gave them more time 
they would be able to, to be Great Britons. I think this is really important for a number of reasons, and not just related to women, but to, to anyone other than a white Englishman. First of all, it's not that women and people of colour and people of the LGBTQ plus community have not made contributions, a significant contribution to the life of the British Isles, which was the criteria. It's that those contributions have not been recognised. Second, I think it also means that we need to rethink what it is we're commemorating, what makes a Great Britain great. The the kind of criteria um, for the BBC was quite tra traditional. The kinds of people that they opined didn't get in were, you know, canonical artists, writers. There was quite a lot of kind of soldiers and military leaders. There was a clear sense of what kinds of contributions, what professions should be part of Great Britain's, as well as a sense of what contributions or professions should not be. And the BBC made kind of comments about how they, they feared that the top 100 would be full of um, sort of celebrities and soap stars and were, were very grateful that they weren't. And I think those issues of what we are commemorating, what we are ce celebrating, are particularly important when we're thinking about a, a much more diverse range of Britons. The kind of um, qualities or contributions that traditional white English male um, uh, perspectives might value, military leadership for instance, might not be the same that women, um, people of colour, um, LGBTQ plus community might also value. And I think we need to rethink um, what, what is worth commemorating. The second aspect is greatness and, and perhaps more particularly the way in which by identifying a, a Great Britain we're moving towards a kind of heroic history or heroic biography and this was something that the BBC were very aware of 20 years ago. Should we be highlighting and commemorating people if you like who are already famous and what about more ordinary um, more ordinary people, what might seem to be more ordinary contributions. One of the interesting nominees in the top 100 was the unknown soldier that many people had nominated as a kind of a symbol of the contributions that ordinary men and women had made to various war efforts. Finally, I think we also need to think that it's a very different British Isles in 2022 than it was in 2002. Not just politically and culturally, but crucially, it's a much more diverse population. And what might a kind of whole new generation and a whole new range of people might think of as the Great Britons worthy of commemoration?